Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this Uxbridge College Virtual Open Day for Engineering. Thank you ever so much for joining us this afternoon. I just wanted to do a little bit of housekeeping before we started. Um, your microphone should be on mute, but if they are not on mute, would you very kindly mute them for us, please? If you do have any questions, please um, do put them in the chat um, during this presentation. We will answer them towards the end of the session. We do have members of our curriculum team here today to answer your questions. Also, just to let you know, this is being recorded today. So if you do want this session to be sent out um, or shared to, to any of your friends, you can do that. And also, if you miss anything because of technical reasons, you can go back and watch that. I'm now going to start this presentation with a, a little video about Oxbridge College. I hope you enjoy. I'd like to now I'd like to welcome our principal, Daryl, to give you his welcome to this virtual open day. Are you there, Daryl? Okay. Hello everyone, my name is Daryl and as Principal of Uxbridge College, I'm very pleased to be able to welcome you to this virtual open day session. I'm aware that lockdown has been a difficult time for everyone and especially so if you've been trying to gain your qualifications this year. And if that is the case, I really do hope it's gone well for you. But now is the time to put next year's plans into action and this virtual session should help you do exactly that. There are a range of career options open to you and it's worth being aware that Uxbridge College offers some of the widest choice of academic, vocational and technical qualifications at various levels to suit your interests and abilities. The college has an excellent track record for success with consistently high performance over more than a decade. Currently, we are the highest performing college in London for 16 to 19 learners, and this has been the case for the last two years. Moreover, our A-level and English and Maths progress scores are amongst the highest in the country. Our teaching staff are specialists in their areas and bring with them vital industry experience to ensure that learning is relevant and that our learners achieve well. In addition, we have a strong reputation for quality support for our learners. And again, to ensure that they succeed and progress, which they do. We've continually invested in our facilities to ensure these are fit for purpose and to industry standard and created really excellent social and recreational facilities for our learners when they're not in lessons. Now our staff 
are here to help you. And because we have such a wide range of choices, we will assist you in finding a suitable place at the college according to your qualifications and your abilities. But importantly, it'll be on a course that you are interested in and therefore have a best chance of succeeding in. I hope I've given you a little flavour of what's on offer at Uxbridge College. And should you wish to join us, I do encourage you to apply early to secure your place here at the college. And I very much look forward to meeting you and welcoming you in person in September. Thank you. Thank you, Daryl, for that presentation. Okay, so just um, just going to um, talk to you a little bit more about what Daryl said. And first of all, um, we are really pleased that we are the number one college in London for the second year in a row for our 16 to 18 year old achievement. And this was published by the Department for Education in March 2020. So really, really pleased about that. And obviously here are some reasons why we're number one. Well, we're number one because our learners say, say we are, which is really great. Uh, we are first in student satisfaction for the FE Choices Survey for London. We're also number one because of our achievement. We have the, the best achievement in London with 99% of our substantial qualifications achieving. And this basically means when you come onto a course at Exbridge College, you will um, be very likely to achieve on that qualification and get you to where you want to be. And our students do go on to say great things about the college and they go on to great things themselves, including going on to university, to apprenticeships or into the workplace. It's worth mentioning today that we are the West London Institute of Technology from September 2020, which I know the curriculum team will mention later on. And we're also going to be we're also running T levels at the college from September 2020, the only college in London starting T levels this year. And we are part of the Mayor's Construction Academy. So we're doing lots of innovative things here at Uxbridge College. Of course, at Uxbridge College, we think about you as the whole learner. So as well as your main qualification, and today we're talking about engineering, we also think about your English and maths, which is really important to have a fantastic future. We think about getting you work ready and your employment skills. But also, we also ensure that you go on to a placement, so a work experience placement and making sure that you have the correct enrichment to learn. So to enhance what you learn in the classroom, we provide you with guest speakers, trips and visits. And I'll mention this a little bit more later on, but we have really strong progression support at the college. And that support is there to encourage you to work hard and to achieve what you want to achieve. At Uxbridge College, we do have some fantastic industry standard facilities and we, we are currently in the process of finishing our brand new um, facilities for engineering, which are, which are nearly finished. So these are going to be brand new facilities for, for learners next year. So we want to make sure you have the best learning environment possible. So with equipped classrooms, workshops and specialist workspaces. And as well as having those outstanding learning environments, we're really proud to have a dedicated and qualified staff at Uxbridge College, which many of them come from the industry. So they're teaching you stuff that they learn themselves when they were working in the sector that you want to go into. And we think that's really fundamentally important when you come to college, that you are learning from someone who is an expert to give you the skills and knowledge that you need to prepare for the workplace or for university. We're very aware at Uxbridge College that we want you to make the most of your college life outside the classroom. So, and, you, and you can meet new friends and meet new people. And you can do that in a number of ways. We have lots of activities on at the college, volunteering and fundraising, but also joining in with student social events. And we want to know what you, what you think about our college. We want to know your views. And this allows us to shape the college life through our really active student union. And don't take our word for it, Ofsted said this themselves in 2019 in a monitoring visit to the college, that our staff have high expectations for our learners and we know how to make them learn, but also when they are encountering problems, we will in ensure that our students 
know what to do and, and how to do it because we know our students well enough. And we're really proud of the last statement made by Ofsted. It's that our learners and our apprentices are positive about their learning experiences and a joy coming to Uxbridge College. I would now like to hand you over to the head of school for engineering, who's going to introduce himself and to the engineering school. Good afternoon, everyone. So, BM, can you change the slide? I'm Maruf Tungekar. So, in engineering, we have two major areas of engineering general engineering, which is mechanical engineering, and we have electrical electronic engineering. And we cover a range of courses from level one to level five. And engineering is part of West London Institute of Technology about 40% of our courses in apprenticeships and in higher education, and some level three are part of West London IoT. Uh, I'll talk about it slightly later. So Liam, next slide, please. So what do we have here? So we have listed the main courses going from level three to level two to level one. So we are offering Pearson BTEC level three national foundation diploma, extended diploma in engineering. So we'll have three pathways here. One is general engineering, which is electromechanical. The second is mechanical engineering and the third is electrical electronic engineering. So anybody moving from GCSE or any, any other qualifications such as uh, Pearson BTEC level two first extended certificate or diploma can do the level three. It is equivalent to three A levels in and it's valued by the employers as well as the universities and, and higher education in general. Uh, uh, so if somebody doesn't have the grade requirements or, the, or is not suitable to meet the entry requirements, which will come on the next slide, they can join other courses such as BTEC level to first extended certificate in engineering, which is a one year course or without any qualifications or slightly lower grades further down, they can join our level one program called EA level one diploma in engineering technologies. Those students who have got A levels or level three qualification, they can join our higher education program under West London Institute of Technology uh, and we are offering different pathways there, which is called Pearson BTEC level four higher national certificate, and then moving on to higher national diploma in engineering in three main categories, general engineering, mechanical engineering, and electrical electronic engineering. In electrical electronic engineering, we are offering sub pathways, keeping the qualification title same as electronics pathway, electrical pathway for high power and voltage, and also automation control and robotics pathway. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so what are the entry requirements? Uh, if you see um, from the left, level three, we are expecting five GCSEs, grades four to nine, four to nine uh, in main subjects, mainly math, science, and English language, and two others, mainly design, technology, ICT, or business. If some schools are not offering those, it's not a problem. We expect uh, and we accept alternate subjects. So or the students coming from the level two engineering, they should have MM in engineering with unit 10, which is maths with engineering along with GCSE maths. So they can embark on the level three program. Those students who are getting less than four or five C's uh, or grade fours, if they have got mainly grade threes, at least four grade threes, again, similar subjects in math, science, English language, and DT, ICT business or some others, they can join the level two program. If the students have grade twos, uh, mainly not threes and fours to above, then they can join the level one program. On higher education, normally the students will start on a HNC first in the first year, and then HND in the second year and top up degree uh, with uh, under IOT with Brunel University. We have partnership with Brunel University for top up degree, and they are devising a special program for IOT students to do the top up in engineering management and electrical electronic and mechanical engineering going forward. So the requirement for HNC, uh, if anybody has got an A-levels in either maths, physics, or engineering with grade C or above, or they have a level three diploma with MP or extended diploma, if with MMP grade, they can join. Uh, we expect them to have a GCSEs four to nine or A star to C in English, maths, and science. And, and if they are 
joining on a HE, we need the employer consent, especially when they're working and they want to join the part-time program. So in higher nationals, in HNC, HND or higher education, we have got both full and part-time programs. And for lower levels, which is level one, two and three, we are mainly looking at apart from the grade, we look at the reference, but I would rather calling reference, I would call a school report, which the learners get it. So year 11 report, uh, we would expect them to come up with and, and bring the report to, to make a judgment about their ability and offering the right, right choice. Next slide, please. Apart from the full-time and part-time program, we work with about 40 or more employers uh, in engineering and they, the students are employed, they are called apprentices and they come to the college depending on what apprenticeship they have. So they come mainly for two days, but some come for one day, depending on different apprenticeships we offer. So at level three and level four, which is called higher apprenticeships, level four, we are offering currently level three mechatronics, uh, wherein we have lots of students from various companies. Uh, and they're all employed. Level three machinist pathway, level three engineering fitter, level three technical support, and level three maintenance and operations engineering technician. So these three, these five pathways do exist at level three. Obviously, the pathways are chosen in consultation with the learner and mainly the employer. It's based on the job roles. And we are going to offer also the level four pathways. Those students who already have A-levels or level three qualification, they'll be joining either one of the pathways along with our higher nationals uh, students in full-time and part-time, which is automation and controls engineering technician, which links with uh, robotics automation control and also manufacturing engineering technician. And the entry requirements for apprenticeships are similar to full-time program, which came on the previous slide. And we are looking also for GCSE grades four to nine in five subjects, especially math, science, and English language. Next slide. Facilities. We have got excellent facilities. Currently, we have got eight workshops and we are going to expand. Hopefully, by between September and November, we'll have five additional workshops under the new IoT building. Uh, to cover the level three, uh, level four, and, and apprenticeships and, and level five programs. So our workshops will have lots of modern equipment and, and machinery. Uh, you will see some of the pictures like drilling machine, lathes, milling machines, band saws, metal cutting um, manually, as well as using a hydraulic power, vacuum forming, grinding, material testing, impact testing, CNC, 3D printing, laser cutting, and so on. That's on the mechanical side, and we'll have more equipment, as I said, uh, for new workshops, uh, really modern and industry and standard uh, going forward further. On electronics side, we have got lots of good provision. We are one of the best, I think, better than many universities in terms of equipment and facilities. Uh, we have from low level to high level, including the soldering iron, multimeters, power supply, oscilloscopes, spectrum analyzers, logic analyzers, logic probes. We have got robotic arms. We have got uh, six axis robots as well, uh, and we can design and manufacture PC, uh, PCBs, printed circuit boards, and we also have programmable logic controller, wherein there are lots of jobs. And we have other small mini projects wherein the learners can get really good understanding of the current innovative technology. Uh, and we are going to have more and more of these. And we cover all industry standard packages, such as Automation Studio, AutoCAD, SolidWorks, MATLAB, Multisim, LabVIEW, uh, PLC, and Robotic Simulation. Next slide. Uh, in the past, our students have call, gone almost everywhere uh, for various companies, whether it's small, medium size, or, or multinational companies, such as British Airways, Ultra Electronics, Transport for London, Thames Water, Crossrail, uh, Formula One uh, team, Royal Opera House, Audi, Sky, to name a few, Otis, British Telecom, uh, air traffic control and uh, cross rail and national rail. Uh, I, do, I did forget to mention in the IoT partnership, we have got Heathrow Airport our, as our anchor partners along with Brunel University and Fujitsu. So they'll be closely working with us along with another uh, group of employers about more than 10, 15. They do feed into the curriculum and some of them will be coming back and maybe giving presentations to the students depending on uh, the class and what topic we, we we have uh, for them to present. Next slide. And again, our students almost gone everywhere, including some really good universities, such as Bath, Bristol, UCL, uh, Brunel is quite popular destination, but we don't uh, 
propose any university we just guide them where the students want to go maybe staying near home or specific qualification and we have got good relationship with various universities because they have been taking our students um, those who want to go to university to finish up their degree program so these are the few universities listed where this or almost across the country everywhere yeah next slide uh, in terms of progression, there are lots of opportunities of progression depending on where you start. It depends on your entry grades you achieve. But for level three progression, let's say if you achieve a two years of level three extended diploma, then you can progress to in the college HNC, HND, or some students prefer to go to university directly, or some people go to work to get a job in engineering, uh, and some lucky ones also get apprenticeships as well because we do have lot of employers who come in and we recruit for them. So there is a good opportunity for many students to stay and get apprenticeship as well, uh, especially with the employers we have or others they can apply directly uh, with the employers, with the national employers as well. Next slide. So these are some of the equipment we have shown as a picture. Uh, hopefully we'll be using most of these. The first on the left is a programmable logic controller. <coughs> on and underneath is there are oscilloscopes. We've got modern four channel color oscilloscopes. And we are demonstrating here a lathe. And on the right side, we have got a six axis industrial robot from ABB. And there is just a printed circuit board at the bottom from one of the students, uh, what he made uh, at a particular level. Next slide. And this is our impact testing machines uh, and material testing machines uh, in our material testing lab. Uh, mainly used by across all the levels, but mainly higher education, but level threes and level twos also use it. And we'll have more of these uh, doing different things. In fact, the jobs do exist in material engineering quite a lot in terms of testing. Uh, next slide. And these are the band saws on the left, milling machine, again, links with apprenticeship program and also the, the lathe and other equipment. Next one, yeah, this is plasma cutter on the left and on the right side, we have got different CNC machine and in the corner far right, it's a, it's a milling machine. So the student get exposure to not only theory, but the practical work in machine workshops or making circuits or mechanical workshops, uh, testing some mechanical principles or material testing and also doing their own projects, especially in the second year of their program uh, in level three as an example. And students are encouraged to come back uh, and, and use the facilities if, if they want to do more and more. This is one of our past student uh, who went after doing level three to Brunel University. So she has written the comment about the support and it's not just boring, but informative and fun, fun course. So you will learn a lot actually, whatever level you join. It's we try to do as many practicals as possible, but obviously currently we are in a situation we are mainly working from home, but hopefully we are going for if the government rules allow, we go for blended learning model, which is a part could be theory from remote and definitely some practical because our, our courses are practical oriented uh, to give the exposure. And also we have got the very good software also, which sometimes you can use from home also some specific version of the software. So it's really good facilities. That's why the students generally like it. If you like the engineering, uh, you will be supported well. Um, so we just expect the basic knowledge of maths and science uh, or physics rather. Yeah, next slide. Again, that's another student. Uh, he's gone to university. He did uh, work very well with us. Uh, and um, he had a couple of work experience. Both employers did value his uh, skills and his commitment when he did work experience. And he's doing well uh, currently at the one of the universities he joined. Another one student we've got, uh, Rachel. She is our current student and she wants to do our uh, higher national. So she is applied and hopefully she will be successful uh, to join our HNC program in September 20. Next slide. So apart from the support from the academic staff, we've got our own support team. 
uh, and also there is a cross college support uh, uh, if any has got any special needs and so on so we get specialist staff teams to support the students so it will be a very school supports so a very good bridge and we gel you into uh, and make and try to make you independent learner slowly by giving you ex excellent knowledge from our staff who are academically and qualified and have got industrial experience along with uh, some managers who got chartered status as well and very good experience generally uh, across all programs and we keep the best teachers in front of the students based on the subject specialism and try to do uh, as much learning and teaching as well as the practical and, and software development skills uh, as possible yeah next slide liam well thank you maruth uh, um um, do you have anything else you you would like to to add there? I can't hear him. Um, but um, thank you, thank you, Maruf, and thank you um, um, for your really good presentation there. Um, if anyone does have any questions, please could you put them in the chat, um, and we will um, pose them to Maruf. And we also have a section manager on today. Um, at the end of the session. So just the same, Maruf um, already mentioned this, but we do have an outstanding network of support for our learners here at Uxbridge College. Just to talk about a little bit about that. So first of all, we have um, a fantastic information advice and guidance team. And what that means is if you're a student and want to firstly know what type of course to go on to, they can help you with that, but they can also help you with advice for part-time work, about what to do after college, so whether to go to UCAS, whether to progress onto an apprenticeship. So, you know, we really support our students, um, not only when they're at the college, but also when they leave the college. So, you know, that support is always there from our advice and guidance team. If you're a student with special educational needs or think you may need some extra support in the classroom, please do contact our learning support team in advance, because that's really important that we can be able to support you in advance of coming to the college. We've worked with thousands and thousands of students across the years and we have lots and lots of ways to support you. So please do contact us um, before you join us. Our, our team in the student support are outstanding with their personal welfare and financial support. Um, students, um, as, you, as we, we know from our experience, sometimes have problems and we're, we're on hand here to help you with any of those problems that you may need. You may just want to talk to somebody and get some advice. So. We have a fantastic network of people here and also we have a financial um, team that support you um, for those students who are eligible for free school meals with what we call a bursary so you get money every week to support you with your studies so you know when you do come to college please do ask us about that that is available for you finally at uxbridge college we we have um, learning resource centers at our uxbridge and hayes campus and that is a library with lots and lots of study facilities for you to go and use. And within those study facilities, we have digital skills and resource um, staff who can help you with all sorts of things such as technical skills, research skills, but also employability skills. So really good, strong academic support there. So hopefully you've listened to this presentation today and you've got lots and lots of um, um, ideas and information and if you want to come and join us in September then this is how you do it. As, as you can appreciate at, at this time we're not holding any physical interviews at the college, it's all done on remotely online but, and this is the quickest and easiest way to apply for our courses. So all you need to do is select your course online and click the orange apply button and that will generate an account for you. Once you have that account, you can log back in at any time you wish to view your details and update your information. The form to apply for a course doesn't take too long. And after you have submitted it, we will contact you to explain what are the next steps of your application. If you would prefer to download the application form, you can do that and you can post it or email it back to us. Now, if you need any more information um, that you haven't received today or want to ask some questions, then please feel free to do that. There's, there's a few ways you can do that. So contact our careers team and that's on 01895 853333. Or you can email at inquiries at uxbridgecollege.ac.uk. Also, please go onto our website where you can find more information, which is www.uxbridgecollege.ac.uk. So has anyone got any questions, please put them in the chat 
Um, there is no such thing as a stupid question. But we'd like to thank you for attending this virtual open day today. We would like to wish you all the best of health and the best of safety during these unique times and hoping to see you um, in September as a student at Ipswich College. If I have no further questions, I'd like to thank you for joining us today and take care. I will now stop the recording. Thank you very much, everybody.